Moin! In this tutorial I will be electroplating a modest 3D printed Iron Man helmet. We will cover how to prepare the 3D print, apply a thick layer of copper plating and ultimately finish it up with gold and paint. This is going to be quite an adventure. Enjoy! Yeah, let's start the printing. I chose a helmet and printed it using matte PLA. The helmet didn't quite fit onto the print bed, which is okay. It allowed me to work on the individual parts separately. The gold PLA is fine, but when I think of gold, I imagine something else. Now let's see how everything is supposed to come together later. I could glue it all together now, but coating the pieces individually is easier. Nevertheless, I mock the helmet up with tape. Somehow there are quite some large gaps everywhere. Well, never mind, putting it on. Not straightforward. I'll have to figure something out for that too. There are now two crucial steps. The first one is deburring and filling all pieces to fit and roughly sanding them. This is an FDM printed helmet with infill. No FDM print is watertight and I definitely don't want electrolyte to enter the helmet. That's why I seal all areas and potentially open seams with resin. And I use old 3D print resin for this. Simply brush the respective areas and cure them with a UV flashlight. Let's take a moment to talk about PPE. I've been doing this for a while now and I'll keep saying it. Wear personal protective equipment or you might end up in trouble. Goggles, respirator, gloves and a lab coat are not fashionable accessories. Stay safe. And now it's time to sand. I prefer doing this manually using a variety of different sandpapers, sanding sponges and so on. It has to be thorough. Of course, we'll further refine it later with spray filler, but keep in mind, every bump and dip will show on the metal layer. Every single one. Therefore, the motto here is flatness. I once tried to measure the frequency at which I hear the typical layer noise while sanding. Result? It was a complete nonsense to attempt that. Now the parts are already quite smooth, but they need to be even smoother. Enter spray filler. First, I rate the household toilet paper roll stash and stick them under the sanded 3D prints. Hot glue gun is the way to go. With it, I can easily apply and polish light layers repeatedly. The sanding sponges get progressively finer. After several layers, I eventually achieved a result that I liked. And now the real fun begins. So, what is electroforming? Long story short, I immerse 3D printed parts in an electrolyte and retrieve copper plated parts. These are essentially all the items I use for the metallization process. I look it looks like a lot and it is, but I'll try to explain all the necessary steps. First we need to make the 3D prints electrically conductive. For this purpose conductive copper paint works well, diluted with acetone at a 2 to 1 ratio. It's best to mix a small amount in a measuring cup. There are also other types of conductive paint such as ready-made copper spray, silver spray or graphite spray. I've already created tutorials for each of them, be free to check them out. There's even a video on my channel where I make a fantastic conductive paint from graphite powder. It is applied using an airbrush in the end. This is a very affordable one that I use exclusively for this purpose. I won't be able to hang the toilet paper rolls in the plating bath later, but the idea is good. That's why I designed custom part holders that I attach to the parts again with hot glue. This allows me to secure the 3D prints well during painting and plating. I spray around two bar. Make sure that the surface is completely degreased and clean, otherwise every hair, every speck of dust will be visible later. I 
I'm now using my old and quite battered 50 liter tank to electroplate the parts. On top of it, I place my rotary jig for which I printed adapters to fit, although I create my own optimized version soon. The copper comes from the air nodes. For that, I head to the hardware store and buy the precious metal for quite a bit of money. But it does what it's supposed to and lasts reasonably long. I place it on the left and right in the box. Normally, coffee filters are wrapped around it, but the sheets are just too big. The print hangs in the middle of the rotary jig. This is how it looks. The 3D print serves as the cathode and is connected to the negative part of the power supply. The anode sheets are accordingly connected to the positive pole in a nutshell as the sheets dissolve in the acid, the copper ions are deposited onto the 3D print through the electric current. Now the acidic copper electrolyte goes into the bath. Here I pay special attention because it can splash. Copper nodes are placed inside, then the 3D print is hung on the jig and the power supply is set to the correct constant current. This is crucial. I use 1 to 1.5 amps per square decimeter of the surface to be plated. After about 4 hours we have achieved a layer thickness of 170 micrometers. That's thicker than one might initially think. The deposition is not free from impurities but uniform and smooth. Very nice. And on the back, you can still see the exposed PLA area. I now proceed in the same way with the remaining parts. For the small earpieces, I don't need such a large tank. I can work with a small one, which I also prefer. Everything here is much smaller and I can use my coffee filters. In principle, it's the same as in the large bath. The whole process is wonderfully scalable. The helmet parts turned out great. To achieve a truly reflective surface, I sand again and polish everything with increasingly fine grits. In the end, I reach a truly ultra-fine polish. Be careful! If you create scratches at the beginning, you won't be able to remove them in later, finer polishes. By the way, you wouldn't believe how long the whole process takes. But hey, ultra shiny results. Okay, now we've at least built our copper man. It looks cool and could almost be left as is. But since we want to compare it with the original PLA print, let's disassemble everything because now comes the tricky part, pan electroplating. First palladium, then gold. I have a stainless steel tray where I intermittently spray with distilled water. We will now gold plate and palladium plate the copper. Yes, it's a gold electrolyte. For this, I use electroplating pens available in various sizes and designs. They are essentially rod anode holders with a cotton ball. The power supply operates in constant voltage mode. The voltage I set depends on the electrolyte. Before starting to coat the parts, it is crucial that they are very clean. I use a galvanic degreaser for this. Either I degrease with electricity or I clean the surface thoroughly and rinse with distilled water. Then I immerse a graphite anode in the palladium electrolyte and circulate it regularly over the copper. The pen is connected to the positive pole and the 3D print is connected to the negative pole. Slowly, the electrolyte now deposits palladium onto the copper. Then I rinse well with distilled water and let it dry. This process continues for each part. Applying the electrolyte is not always easy as it depends on temperature and other factors. In a sense, it requires some practice. Golden areas and parts are coated with gold electrolyte. The gold electrolyte must never come into contact with acid as it produces toxic fumes. I always work with a respirator in a well-ventilated room. Working outdoors is a very good alternative and any electrolyte residues that accumulate, I collect separately and take them to the recycling center. This is an absolute must. Now I have a palladium golden man. 
I use the mirror-like bright palladium layer to create a candy coating with transparent red acrylic paint. For this, I dilute the paint and add some paint retarder. I mask the areas I don't want to paint. I also use my custom holders for the parts again. I then spray the paint with low pressure and after that I let the individual parts dry for two days. The masking should be removed while the paint is still not completely dry. I'm so satisfied with the result, although I'm not a particularly skilled painter. There's surely room for improvement. It's time to assemble it now. I don't have the option to use plastic glue since everything is metallic. Therefore, I glue together with small custom plates and two component adhesive. I can connect the neck piece with magnets. The face plate can be easily hooked in. Just apply some black paint here and there and the thing is almost ready. Yeah, what would the helmet be without glowing white eyes? I got these LED things for that purpose. I can heat them up with a heat gun and simply press them into the curves of the helmet. Stick them in briefly and they are in. You can even see through them. <laughs> a bit of soldering for power and the whole thing is ready and operational. I have to admit that the transformation into a metal helmet looks easier than it actually is. Moreover, it takes a really long time and whether it's truly worth it is a decision one has to make for themselves. It's definitely a challenge and I generally enjoy taking on such projects. And by the way, if you're looking for truly excellent Iron Man's props, check out Frankly Build and Alex Lab. I don't actually take commissions or run shops, I only create these videos. As you might suspect, it helps this channel if you share, comment, subscribe or interact in any way. I hope you enjoyed it and I try to produce content a bit faster in the future. Take care and tschüss.